Tomorrow, we mark a grim anniversary in this country, five years since the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. 58 people killed, hundreds of others wounded at a country music festival on the Las Vegas Strip in 2017. A gunman opened fire from the Mandalay Bay Hotel, shooting downward and into the crowd. A new four-part documentary from our streaming service, Paramount Plus, it's called 11 Minutes, features in-depth interviews with people who were there that night. Among them are concert goers, first responders, and musician Jason Aldean, who was performing. He was on stage when the gunfire started. Here is a preview of the documentary, and as you might expect, we do need to warn you, some of this may be disturbing to watch. Take a look. Vegas was always one of the shows for me that I always look forward to. Welcome back to up in Vegas was the best thing ever. That was my first country concert. I was excited. I was like, all right, let's do this. Get ready. Here we go. Let's set it up. That's when uh, the, the world changed for us. Watch the people fall in the crowd. Boom, 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 boom. I just felt the worst pain of my life. You did not survive cancer to die here tonight. I told her I got her. I've already lost two girls. I'm not losing another one. Sorry. We were arm in arm. Carrie was on my left, and we're running. And that's when she said, you know, Kelly, I've been shocked. I just saw all of these doctors coming down the hallway, and in the back was a guy with a clerical collar, and I, I just knew. And that was it. I didn't want to leave her. So, sorry. Why do you need an assault weapon? That's really for war. Why do you need more than 10 rounds of ammunition? I'm looking at what the heroes did that night, people risking their lives for other people. There's a very heavy weight that goes with being the storyteller. It's important that people know the truth. I don't think there was any one of us that thought we were coming out the same way that we went in. Longtime country radio host Stormy Warren, uh, who you just saw in the, that setup clip, uh, joins us now. You were there that night. Uh, uh, in, in the clip, you're the one who said uh, there's a very heavy weight that comes with being the storyteller. You are part of this story. It's got to be hard to relive, though. Yeah, it's, it, it is. We relive it every day. Everybody who's there, 22,000 of us, we live it and we feel it and we see it and we hear it every day. We find a way through therapy and a lot of other ways to find a safe spot for this story to live. But now with this documentary out, it's all coming right up to the surface again. You know, the confusion of those first moments, you're at a concert, it's, lo it's, it's yeah. loud, yeah. people are dancing, there's a lot of happening. movement, yeah. and then you hear the pops. And you were backstage at the time. I was on stage. You were on stage. Yeah, there's a few of us off downstage right, and you know, a few songs in, any old bar stool is playing with Jason LD, and we hear, ta 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 I was like, well, what the, is pyrotechnics? Is it what? We didn't know what it was. And a longtime friend of mine said, who's been on the road on concerts forever said, uh, that was not pyrotechnics and this was not technical. Mm. And then the second volley hit and then the third. And then we said, eh, it's about time to get off the stage after seeing literally like you saw in that clip, the bodies dropping right in front of us and bullets hitting the stage. A bullet hit a Tully's, the bass player's base mm -hmm. um, and Jason and the band get off stage. We get off stage and we're hiding behind a little concrete barrier. And that 11 minutes was might as well have been 11 hours. Just I mean, the fact that it was 11 minutes. That's, that's the thing that got me. I intended to just watch one episode. There were four. <laughs> I watched the first one and then I couldn't stop because I've never seen anything like it. Kudos to Susan Zarinsky and See It Now Studios, 
who put it together, because I thought you guys really took us there behind the scenes. Stories like Stormy, where one woman had to have her chest open with no medication and is told by the doctor and nurse, this is going to hurt, but we have no choice. We have to do it now. I'm always fascinated by these stories because the news moves on. Yeah. And then you guys are still left with all these wounds. The mm -hmm. people who are still covering, recovering who are still traumatized. Mm -hmm. Can you just explain what it has meant to you? You said nobody can, comes out of this unchanged. No. How you were changed, and you tell a very compelling story about a girl in red shorts that you're yeah. still haunted by. Uh, that was, everybody has their own image or own sound or experience or memory of that night, and they're all different. That's what's beautiful about this four-part docuseries is it weaves everybody's individual stories together. I have a better picture of what happened. Were you reluctant to take part in this? Absolutely. Why? Because um, I didn't want to relive it again. Um, we relive it every day. I didn't th see what I could do to benefit mm -hmm. this project. Um, I'm glad I did it now. I am too. Because um, it's so well done. Yeah. Um, I was nervous about how the story was going to be told. I remember asking one of the producers, Sarah, I said, if it's anything but a timeline of the night, I don't want a part of it. Um, I don't want theories. I don't want speculation. I don't want agendas. And none of that's in there. No, you is... took us there. You took yeah. us there. Yeah, was... So how are you changed? And who's the girl with the red shorts? Um, the girl in the red shorts is what changed me. Um, I, I went After the shooting, I went out into the bowl, and it looked... I hate this analogy, but it's the only one I could come up with. I could only imagine what Normandy looked like. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Um, because there were just bodies everywhere. It wasn't like one or two. It was dozens lot, of bodies. Yeah. yeah. And in... And they were not, it was not Not pretty. in good condition. No. And, um, and this one girl who's curled up in red shorts, everybody had somebody around them. Everybody had family or friends or caretakers or heroes, first responders. She did not. She was alone. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to go to her. And I did know she was alive or if she had passed, but I needed to go check on her. And I got yanked away at the last second to go care for some other people. Mm -hmm. And I never got the chance to go back and check mm -hmm. on red shorts. You, um... You had a strong reaction to the list of mass shootings that have happened since um, the last October minutes, yeah. 1st, 2017. And this is at the end of the documentary. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that reaction and why. Um, the analogy I recently came up with, and I'm so glad I did because it's so true, uh, watching the last seven minutes, it's a scroll of all the mass shootings, yeah. just text. A lot of names. A lot of names. Right. And it takes the, almost the exact same amount of time as the 11 minutes did. Hmm. And so my reaction was the same. I started getting angry and started yelling at the TV. It's like, stop. Yes. Same thing we did when the shots were fired. So mm. it's powerful. The whole thing is so well yeah, done. I, I, I really, I can't say enough how people should see this because we don't see storytelling like this after an event like this. Yeah. Because you think they survived, they're fine. There's You're right. so much trauma. We move on. We do people move they. on. But they can't. No, we you don't. Can't. No, we don't. Still here it's the rest voice. of your life that you're dealing with. Absolutely. All right, so, many Warren, thank you very much for being here. Uh, you can stream the four-part documentary, 11 Minutes, now on Paramount+, Plus, which we are proud to say, much yes. like CBS itself, is part of Paramount Global. Yes. We'll be right back. Thank you all.